Although I know Alice Randall best as a friend, teacher, mom, and professor at Vanderbilt University, you may have seen her in the Ken Burns documentary, Country Music, or in the Charlie Pride documentary, I'm Just Me. Alice is a country music scholar and songwriter who has had over 30 songs recorded by stars including Trisha Yearwood, Glenn Campbell, and Steve Earle. She also wrote a video of the year for Reba McIntyre, screenplays for Oprah Winfrey, and for Quincy Jones. Her nonfiction includes works on a wide range of subjects, but most typically on Southern food, Southern history, and country music. She is also a best-selling author on the New York Times list for literary fiction, and she published five novels, the most recent one being Black Bottom Saints, and other popular and successful books, such as The Wind Done Gone and Pushkin and the Queen of Spades. When Vanderbilt first opened the freshman quad on the Peabody campus, Alice Randall was asked to lead one of the freshman dormitories and then to serve as a writer in residence. She was recently honored as the 2021 Madison Surratt Prize in Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching. I have known Alice Randall as a teacher. I, for more than 10 years, she team taught with me at MBA. Her extraordinary gifts as a writer and teacher benefited hundreds of MBA students. I often marveled at her ability to push our seniors and to give of her time and perspective to others. Additionally, she shared with the MBA community the talents and teaching skills of her daughter, Caroline Randall Williams, who succeeded her mom by teaching a number of this year's current seniors and then followed her mom by serving as a resident writer and teacher at Vanderbilt. I'm grateful for Alice Randall's fervent support of our school and community. Whenever I've asked Alice to assist our school and students, she has responded with grace, goodness, and dedication. She is tireless in her work and support, especially to those individuals and communities she cares about. MBA and our students and community have all seen and realized her friendship and many talents. I am honored to present a great friend to my wife and me, a talented songwriter, teacher, screenwriter, and novelist, and an individual who cares deeply for the MBA community. Please help me welcome Alice Randall. Yes, 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 you made it. Montgomery Bell Academy Class of 2021, you have arrived at commencement. This year in this city, that almost feels like a miracle. In the last 14 months, Nashville has endured a pandemic, a tornado, a derrico, a bomb, and a flood. Nothing about being here is performa. You are the class that was called upon to continue to perform with excellence when not just the rules were changing, but the very ground on which the game was being played was rapidly, dramatically, and constantly changing. I, the first woman in history to give the Montgomery Bell Academy commencement address, am a part of the change and the continuity. I attended my first MBA graduation 26 years ago, invited by an 18-year-old graduating senior in the class of 1995. Bill Wilson. Bill's mother, Gail, had believed her 10th grade son would enjoy having her writer friend, Alice, as a mentor and made the original introduction. By the time graduation rolled around, with Bill's invitation in my purse, I was attending the first MBA commencement presided over by Brad Joya as headmaster. That doesn't happen without Bill's mama. In honor of all the mothers, grandmothers, aunts, and sisters in this audience, I call Gail's name to call in all the women who contribute visibly and invisibly to all the excellence that is MBA. Nothing happens without the mamas. By inviting me to speak in this place at this moment, MBA sends Nashville and the world a strong and clear message that women's voices and women's experiences are valuable and worthy of being heard.
The invitation is a gift and your listening presence is a gift. I thank the class of 2021, their parents, grandparents, and friends. I thank the faculty of MBA, the board of MBA, and I thank Headmaster Joya and all gathered here for the good gift. Netan is a Hebrew word for give. Netan is a palindrome. Forward or backwards, it's spelled N-A-T-A-N. I love the word because it reminds me that giving is an act that moves in two directions. To give is to receive, and to receive is to give. Much has been given to each of you, class of 2021. What will you give back? Who will you give it to? How you answer those questions with the actions of your life, not the words of your mouth, will tell the world who you are and will in no small measure determine what our world will be. Will it be increasingly equitable for increasingly larger swaths of the population? Or will it be increasingly polarized in terms of opportunity and opinion? Netan, how you live will have an impact. How you give will have an impact. And I'm not just talking money, philanthropy. How will you give your opinion? How will you receive the opinion of others? Will you talk in an echo chamber or silo, communicating only with others who think just like you and very much like you? Or are you willing to receive divergent opinion as reciprocal gift? Netan, a two-syllable, five-letter reminder that is by giving as we receive and receiving as we give, that we both elevate ourselves and move from this time of reckoning closer to an era of reconciliation. This place is a city on a hill. By that I mean what Sam has already spoken to a little bit about. This school is a place that leans hard into an ideal that strives to have its students embody and be inspiring examples of specific virtues associated with the words scholar, athlete, gentleman. Gentlemen is a complicated part. One of my favorite movies is Any Given Sunday, directed by Oliver Stone. It's about a football team, and it's about life. Al Pacino plays an aging coach getting counted out of the game when he pivots and wins. The title refers to the reality at the level of NFL play. On any given Sunday, either team can win, either team can lose. For the coach, the joy of football isn't winning. It's those moments when the team is looking downfield together with all 11 men seeing things the same way, looking in the same direction. So much of being a scholar and being an athlete is about what you do as part of a team, all looking in the same direction, all wanting the same win. Being a gentleman is about how you treat people looking in an opposite direction wanting a different win, how you treat people not playing on your team. The class of 2021 knows much about the code of the gentleman, but allow me to suggest a few amplifications, refinements, and additions as gift to that code that I hope may assist you as you make your way in the world beyond the city on a hill, starting with a gentleman pays his debts, but first he's got to know who he's indebted to. Like all that are invited to give this speech, I have wondered what I can tell you that will be of use to you. But as a person who could not have attended this school, whose only child could not have attended this school, I have also asked myself, why am I standing here? The answer for me is simple. A lady pays her debts too. I'm paying back people who gifted me with so much, people who loved MBA. MBA gives out a Lifetime Alumni Achievement Award. Six of the people who have received that award have played a significant role in my life and I in theirs. I am proud to call or have called each of the following MBA men friend. Paul Worley, class of 68. Tommy Schulman, class of 68. Morgan Intrican, class of 73. Ridley Wills, class of 52. Bob McNeely, class of 50. Ed Nelson, class of 1948. Ed, Bob, and Ridley graduated from MBA before I was born. 
Every one of these men graduated MBA when Nashville was a segregated city and women were not valued in the workplace. And yet all of them did the unexpected. They became the true friend and ally of a person with whom they didn't share a gender, age cohort, or ethnicity because they had this understanding. Friends who do not look like you make you stronger. That knowledge launched those men to some dizzying professional heights. Paul Worley brought the world some of the very best nitty gritty dirt band music, yes, but perhaps more significantly, he produced two profoundly political feminist country acts, the Dixie Chicks and Martina McBride. Morgan Intrigan publishes extraordinary novels and works of nonfiction, quite a bit of it by writers who look just like him, but he's published Sayaka Maratha and Karan Desai. Tommy Shulman, with a single iconic film, Dead Poet Society, ushered in an era in which some of our best and brightest enter into classroom teaching while spotlighting the truth. Economic privilege and social status does not make one immune to mental illness. Ridley Wills is Nashville's preeminent historian, and he's always looking for an untold story about not the usual suspects. Bob McNeely, a banker supreme for the ages, supported emerging female leaders in finance and other industries. Ed Nelson was more than an expert on Japan. In the immediate aftermath of World War II, he made significant friendships with Japanese business and political leaders, and these friendships bloomed into Tennessee jobs, international trade relationships, and a garden at Cheekwood. And they all befriended me. The friendships were each different, some less close, some more close, all have been significant. In aggregate, we've eaten in each other's homes, shared confidences, shared resources, shared insights. We've created art together, made money, lost money, mourned losses, strategized, elected officials, we rebuked officials, looked back over global political history, and restored some missing pieces of history. We have called out racism, sexism, and mediocrity. And we have called in genius, creativity, and every healthy kind of good time. Over black coffee, brown liquor, and red wine, and in banks, and at record labels, and publishing, and in the film business, in historical house museums, well, anywhere we saw it, and we saw a lot. They saw things I didn't see. I saw things they didn't see, good and bad. Sometimes, some places, we were each other's secret weapon. Sometimes we looked out for each other and didn't even tell the other one. We were seldom looking in the same direction and never looking in the same direction with nine other people looking with us, never. But more than once we worked both ends of the same street to profound positive effect. Bob McNeely was known as later years to gift certain cherished friends with legendary pickles made in his kitchen by Betty Sue. I've seen people notice my jar of Bob's pickles under my tree and have a sudden change of heart about some plan I was advocating they had been opposing. When you were riding with Bob McNeely, a whole lot of folk didn't want to ride against you. The same has been said for me. We were powerful and unexpected allies. As a good ally, I have three pieces of advice for the class of 2021. One, make yourself some friend girls. None of you are graduating from MBA without a lot of male friends. Many of you are graduating without a single close female friend. Fix that. In my completely unscientific study of the winners of the Lifetime Achievement Award at MBA, a thing they have in common, women friends. Two, listen to more country music. Then ask yourself, what would Merle Haggard do? Merle Haggard's answer is always, turn the pain into art, not anger. Turn the pain into empathy, not destruction. And this is most important. Think about what you might owe Lucy, Pollyann, Harriet, and Sarah Jane. Lucy, Pollyann, Harriet, and Sarah Jane were black women owned by Montgomery Bell, women who contributed significantly to his wealth. And some of his wealth went towards the founding of this school. It is beyond the scope of this celebration to parse Montgomery Bell's complex relation to the people he owned, many of whom he dramatically liberated, some of whom he tortured, but this is known. 
His wealth was made possible by the labor of the enslaved, including enslaved children and women. In this time of reckoning, let us acknowledge Lucy, Polly Ann, Harriet, and Sarah Jane as invisible founders of this feast, symbolically present in my visible body at this podium. Without their labor, this school does not exist. I don't get to call those women's names without the support of one true gentleman, Brad Joya. Your headmaster is one of the finest men I have ever known, a person of intellect and integrity, extraordinary Minna's extraordinary husband. He has been my secret weapon in many battles, and I have been his in one or two. He helped make this place a city on a hill. There's a part of Mr. Joya in every young man graduating from this academy today. Steel sharpens steel. You carry his conviction, you carry it in your proud presence. Some of you carry his heart, you carry it in your heart. Yes, he has done much with Minna by his side every step of the steep path to make MBA a city on a hill a better place than most this hill, a better place than most this hill. If you take what you learned here and figure out some way to make the world more like the best parts of this place, this place where everyone who has grit finds suitable opportunities, you will have done more than acknowledge your debt to Lucy, Polly Ann, Harriet, and Sarah Jane. You would have begun to pay it back by crafting a better future for all, Netan. In close, I will leave you with some country jukebox wisdom. I am a country songwriter after all. Most of my big songs are about girls. Girls ride horses too, small towns are smaller for girls, X's and O's, an American girl. But I've written a few songs I'm particularly proud of about boys and men. One is called Went for a Ride. It's about two 19th century cowboys, one black, one white, and a world they shared on the frontier. In the 21st century, Justin McBride, former PBR world champion bull rider, recorded Went for a Ride. His version currently has 311,410 views on YouTube. Inspired by McBride, and another old friend and unexpected ally of mine, Garth Brooks. I've chosen three words to send you out into the world, class of 2021. Good ride, cowboy. That's what the rodeo men say, whether you get bucked off or make the eight second whistle, because you got on. And you, the class of 2021, didn't just get on. You got on and you didn't let go until the metaphoric eight second whistle blew. You held on through pandemic, tornado, derrico, and flood, through hard truths. And in holding on, you are part of a tradition of cowboys, black as the sky on a moonless night, white as the moon, and gold as the morning sun. And you are part of the tradition of MBA men meeting opportunity and adversity with grit. To each and every one of you I say with renewed confidence in America's future, good ride, cowboy. <laughs>